this STEM activity challenge is called Index Card Tower. And what I want to do in this video is I want to talk to you about this activity, a summary of it. I want to talk to you about the materials you'll need to run this activity, talk about how you might want to set this up and run it in your classroom, and then finally, what is the science behind this? What are we looking for the students to learn? So the summary is it's really what it sounds like. Uh, you make a tower out of index cards. You also have masking tape that you can use. Um, and we've got several different types of masking tape. Uh, I'll talk more about that when talking about how to run this with your classroom. Okay, so the goal is to make the tallest tower possible with the students working in groups. So next, materials. Obviously we need index cards. You've got options of colorful cards or you could just go with white. And I buy these at the dollar store. You can get like 100 colored ones for a dollar or you can get like 200 white ones. And the, the colored ones, are they're just more fun to work with. They make for better pictures. So that's what I would, I would go with. So we've got index cards. Uh, we've also got masking tape. And I would encourage you to use the, some of the thinner masking tape that you can find. Not necessarily the big, thick masking tape. Otherwise, you're going to have your tower with tons and tons of tape on it. In fact, with your older kids, so maybe third grade and above, you can even limit them to one meter, or less of uh, masking tape. That way they'll have to uh, use it wisely. They'll have to talk about when it's important to use it, when it's not. For the younger kids, uh, that might be too much. I might give them a roll of masking tape and tell them don't go uh, too wild with it. So those are the materials. That's what you'll need. You'll also need a meter stick to walk around to measure uh, the height of their towers near the end. Okay, now in setting this up, uh, I've got several other activity challenges. Uh, we've got one spaghetti tower, I've got the gun, gumdrop tower, and then also, also I've got this one. And I set up the activities the same in terms of just asking students to uh, think about tall buildings that they know of, tall buildings in the area, and, uh, and what makes them so tall. So that's usually how we start off um, and then move from there into the fact that we're going to build a tower, we're going to build it out of paper, we're going to build it out of uh, index cards, which by themselves are not really all that strong. So the students are going to work together to try to figure out how they can build the tallest tower possible. So um, in setting this up with the classroom, we, we start with that and then I tell them as you're working with your groups, some of you may have good ideas, some of you may have bad ideas, you've got to try some things. If something doesn't work, take a step back, analyze it, think about it. What can you do different to make a better, stronger tower? So the goal by the end is to have the tallest tower possible. Make sure that you stress to the students that when it's time for you to measure the height of their tower, they can't have students still hanging on to it. Okay, that wouldn't be the tower supporting its own weight. So you stress that several times at the beginning because they are going to want to hold on to uh, the tower. Uh, as they're doing that. All right, so that's running it in the classroom. And then the final thing, talking about the science behind this. Again, this is just like the other activities we run. We're looking at gravity. Gravity is trying to pull this tower down, and our goal is to keep it up. And so what the students are going to be doing is they're going to be creating uh, structures that they think are strong. Uh, and as something starts to fall sideways, what can they do to support it? There were, our goal is to overcome what gravity is doing. So uh, we'll, we'll have them uh, work to build the tallest power po tower possible, and we're looking to see if they can work with their group uh, collaboratively. Uh, make sure that you say at the beginning, you know, we shouldn't have one student taking over and running this group. We need to, to get information from everyone in the group. We need to try different ideas from different people in the group. So this is a fun activity. Um, if you have the extra time, uh, you can also give them markers. They can draw uh, little little buildings. They can draw little people inside of some of the windows. Uh, again, that's if you have the extra time available. This is an activity that the kids love. And again, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, take some pictures. Um, the kids will have a blast. Good luck. Hi, I'm Josh, also known as Science Demo Guy. If you liked the video that you just saw, and if you'd like to see more STEM activity challenges like this, along with the student worksheets that go with each activity, the materials that you would need to run this in your classroom, the grading rubrics and the teacher instructions, all of these as editable PDFs, which means if you wanted to, you could customize it for your specific classroom, then check out my website, sciencedemoguy.com.
forward slash store. What you'll find is that I sell these as individual products and then I also sell them as packs at a discount. I have some very popular 16 packs and I've just created a 36 pack which I call STEM for the year. While you're there, be sure to check out the reviews that other teachers have left. We have hundreds of reviews from teachers that have loved incorporating these STEM activity challenges in their classroom and maybe you will as well.